Hi, I'm Luminous Star. Welcome to the channel. All of my stars. Mwah. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thank you for motivating me to keep this channel Luminous Star active. Thank you also for sharing your stories. You motivate me and you inspire me to continue to thrive forward, just like you do everyone else who resonates with your story. Everyone who's visiting for the first time, welcome to Luminous Star. And why don't you scroll down and hit that subscription button and become part of the Star family. We would love to have you Today join us. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how narcissists can gain access to your emotional body if you have gateway. Now, some people already know that narcissists like to tap into the energy field and they like to extract the energy from others in order to supply their false self-image. A lot of us already know this. However, when it comes to gateways, one of the things that the narcissist does is they will use a person's gateway, whatever his or her gateway is, to gain access to the emotional body. Now, how do they do that? One thing that they do is they will have the other person, whoever the source supplier may be, more than likely it's gonna be a person who's a primary source supply, like a family member or a close friend. So the narcissist or the closest personality, what they would do is they will influence that person or those individuals to focus on their past childhood trauma, should there be any childhood trauma. If there isn't any childhood trauma, they will have the person focus on unresolved painful issues of their past. Now the unresolved past issue could be a number of things, such as a traumatic event, all right? We can come up with a lot of things that will go under the category of a traumatic event. The narcissist and the cluster personality, they like to have the person who's a primary source supplier focus on those things. Now this is where the shenanigans come where in. The narcissist and the cluster personality, they have a whole big bag of tricks, right? They have a lot of abracadabras. <laughs> they like to have people focus on what hurts. So whatever the person's gateway is, again, the gateway could be a traumatic event. Usually it is. However, it's an unresolved painful issue and it can stem from their childhood. So the cluster B personality and the narcissist, they will influence that person to focus on So that. this way, when there's unpleasant emotions that are experienced, such as sadness, and anger. The narcissist and the cluster personality, they benefit from that. I know it sounds horrible. A lot of you already have experienced this. The narcissist and the cluster personality, they don't do healthy relationships. That means there's gonna be a lot of broken hearts. There's gonna be a lot of traumatic experiences in that dysfunctional relationship with the narcissist and the cluster personality because they, they're gonna try to invoke that. They're gonna try to influence that. Okay, this is why a lot of people tend to have more accidents when they are involved with a narcissist and a custody personality. And yes, I am including romantically, sexually, okay? Not just family, not just friends. If the custody personality and the narcissist is in the relationship, it's gonna be a dysfunctional relationship. The other thing that a lot of people are reporting is that there has been a spike in their anxiety but not only that, they tend to be more accident prone. Well, this is not something that is very unusual. Not when we're talking about the narcissist and the cluster personality. So in today's video, when I get more into detail about the gateways, I'm gonna bring that up about the traumatic events, okay? And again, the traumatic events vary from person to person. The bottom line is, if there's an unresolved painful issue, the narcissist and the cluster personality it's gonna influence that person to focus on that. This is why it's also important not to tell the narcissist and the cluster personality a lot of traumatic and painful things that have happened or occurred in your life because they will use that against the source supplier. Again, this is very unfortunate, but it's something that is very often the case. Okay, so don't forget to check the description box below for more details such as the references and resources. Also, don't forget to like and share this video. I'm Luminous Star, and I certainly hope you will enjoy this video. And having said all that, let's get on with the video. Narcissists may use your gateway to gain access to your emotional body. Topics of discussion. The origin of an individual's gateway. Second topic. Becoming familiar with how your gateway functions. Third topic. 
Narcissists only need your permission to use your gateway to obtain source supply. First point, traumatic events can be the origin of gateways in a person's life. When one leaves traumatic events unresolved, a gateway can occur. The evidence of one who has a gateway in his or her life is self-medication, drugs, alcohol, promiscuity, sexual perversion, dysfunctional relationships, pardon me, and dysfunctional relationships. Okay, so what's going on here is that a person who has a gateway in his or her life, nine times out of ten chances, it is because there was a traumatic event in his or her life. More than likely, it was in their childhood. It could be that they witnessed someone that they love or care about either in an accident or either that person was injured, okay, or worse, it was a fatality or a person passed on. Now, this is very traumatic for most children. So when you take that and it is unresolved, then it can pop up in your life via your job, your personal relationships, even if you have a business. See, that manifestation will be there via people, places, and things. So the unresolved traumatic issue will continue to pop up, and this is how a gateway occurs. Unresolved hurt gets expressed unconsciously in other ways. This is another way of looking at how gateways function in a person's life. Gateways are like bridges from the traumatic event in a person's life that leads to his or her emotional body. The narcissist can gain access to the emotional body of source supply and or targeted prey whenever he or she becomes reactionary. So when a person becomes reactionary, one of the things that's going on is that he or she has their energy that is emotion. That's another way of looking at emotion. Again, emotion is energy in motion. When a person becomes reactionary, that's going to involve their emotional body. This is another way of looking at the energy body. So when the narcissist is on the scene or when the narcissist is around, they're going to tap into the energy field of the person who has the emotional body who is reactionary. This is often why the narcissist and the cosmic personality feels better after a heated argument. First, they instigate the argument or they instigate some type of trauma or they instigate some type of drama or chaos. You ever wonder why the narcissist feels better after the argument is over, but yet you're left feeling drained? That's why. Everyone has an emotional body Everybody has an energy field. The emotional body and the energy field are linked. Everyone has emotions that they express and or feel. Even when they try to suppress those emotions, they're still experienced, they're still felt. So the narcissist and cosmic personality, when they try to goat people into arguments, they are attempting to extract from the energy field via the emotional body of the individual, like the targeted prey or the source supply. When that happens, due to energy transference, the narcissist and the cosmic personality more than likely will benefit from a person becoming reactionary. There are emotions that the narcissist often feel. One of those emotions is anger. So when they go the other person into an argument, that person more than likely will not only feel anxiety, they're going to feel anger. The narcissist and the cosmic personality, their false self image feeds off of this via the person's emotional body and their energetic field, okay, or their energy field. So when a person is feeling any type of emotion, especially when there's a lower vibrational frequency emotion like anger, the narcissist and the cosmic personality will benefit nine times under 10 chances because they're feeding off of the energy field of the person who's reactionary, which means that their false self image is being well supplied. This is often why, again, the narcissist and the cosmic personality feels relaxed 
they feel better after they have accomplished their mission, which is to get others to become reactionary. The gateway of a person is like a bridge from that traumatic event or that unresolved painful issue in their life, which leads right to their emotional body. Now the gateway function in a person's life via the dysfunctional relationship. That is one way a gateway can function in a person's life via a dysfunctional relationship. Because the relationship, even though it's dysfunctional, there's activity. There's a theme of that dysfunctional relationship. Now when we're talking about a narcissist and person personality, what's the theme of the relationship? Some of the common themes are manipulation. Okay, deception. This is what's going on in the relationship. The narcissist and cluster personality, they're juggling a lot of shenanigans. So this is where the manipulation comes in. This is where the deception comes in. This is where the gaslighting comes in. Okay, so this, now we're talking about the theme of the dysfunctional relationship. The theme is what is going on in the relationship. What's the usual thing that's going on in the relationship? The gateway that's in a person's life will reflect the theme of that dysfunctional relationship. This is how the gateway functions in a person's life because again, it is a mirror of the dysfunctional relationship. Case in point, a lot of times the narcissist and cluster B personality will have the same characteristics of say a cluster B personality parent or a codependent parent. The person who's the source supplier or a primary source supplier in the dysfunctional relationship with a narcissist, often they describe the narcissist as a person who reminds them of an initial cluster B personality in their past who has hurt or, tra or traumatized him or her. Okay, so whoever the initial person who's a cluster B personality was or is, the cluster B personality who is currently in that person's life will often have the same characteristics or similar characteristics of that person. Again, case in point, the cluster B personality parent or the codependent parent of a person who is a source supplier of a narcissist or a cluster B personality. So the gateway can be like a mirror as well. So the gateway is like a mirror to a person's unresolved painful past and the gateway also functions in a person's life as a reflection of their current dysfunctional relationships or relationship with a narcissist and a cluster personality. Let's move forward. During the dysfunctional relationships with narcissists and those who have a cluster personality, primary source supply are often encouraged to focus upon his or her unresolved trauma and pain. Unpleasant emotions such as Anger and anxiety can occur as one recalls traumatic unresolved pain. Okay, so unpleasant emotions such as anger and actually when it comes to anxiety, that's a state. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up right now. Anxiety is a state. What comes before the state of being in anxiety is fear. So that is an emotion. Fear comes before the anxiety. Fear is there and then what blossoms or grows from that fear is a state of anxiety. Okay, I just wanted to clean that up. Okay, so the unpleasant emotions that one feels when they recall the traumatic unresolved pain or the traumatic event, this is where the triggering comes in. This is when a person is often triggered by the narcissist or the cluster personality, which is intentional. Sometimes it's not, but sometimes it is. So during the dysfunctional relationship with a narcissist or a cluster B personality, they are often encouraged to focus on their unresolved trauma and pain. So that way they are triggered more often. When a person is triggered more often, the cluster B personality and the narcissist, their source supply, pardon me, their false self image is supplied. All right, let's move forward. Narcissists are often well supplied when others around him or her reenact unresolved childhood trauma and issues from their past, which are, 
which are avoided at all costs, pardon me, which are avoided at all costs. The relationship remains dysfunctional due to those who leave his or her pain unresolved while choosing to comply with the narcissist and or custody personality. So when the narcissist and custody personality is influencing one to focus on their unresolved pain, again, as I stated, this often will trigger him or her. So then the person will experience certain unpleasant emotions, such as fear and anger. The relationship will remain dysfunctional. One of the reasons why the relationship remains dysfunctional is because one or both people, now I'm going to go ahead and just say that this is a romantic relationship, but this can certainly be any relationship with a narcissist or cluster of personality. Again, that relationship, the dysfunctional relationship will remain that way because either one or both has unresolved painful issues that they're not addressing. The narcissist and the cluster of personality often likes to push the buttons of other people so they can become reactionary. Therefore, they're reenacting unresolved childhood trauma and issues from their past, unbeknownst to him or her. The narcissist and cluster personality really doesn't care about that. So the other person who is a targeted prey or a source supplier, they're not going to be aware that they are reenacting unresolved childhood trauma as well. But here's the thing. The only person who's benefiting from that dynamic or that exchange is the narcissist. And it is because, as I just explained, the narcissist will sometimes intentionally influence others to not only focus on unresolved painful past, okay, they will also have them or influence them to become reactionary. They will push their buttons. Okay, so the, again, the only person who's really benefiting here is the narcissist or the custody personality. So when a person continues to comply to this dynamic, which is the dysfunctional relationship, he or she is not benefiting. The narcissist benefits. The cluster of personality benefits. Okay, so the other person who's the primary source supplier or the targeted prey, even though they're reenacting unresolved childhood trauma and issues from their past, the narcissist is the one who's benefiting from that. The narcissist only does dysfunctional relationships. Nine times out of ten chances, he or she is not that uncomfortable with what's going on because they're benefiting. Their false self-image is being well supplied. So of course they're not going to be uncomfortable. The other person who's the source supplier or the primary source supplier or the target of prey, they're going to be a little bit uncomfortable. Again, because their energy field is being tapped into. And they're focusing on the unresolved painful issue. And it is very easy to become distracted by this entire shenanigan. Let's move forward. Narcissists and or plus personalities are very manipulative and often say or do things to influence others to become reactionary. It is very common that romantic partners of narcissists will describe him or her with characteristics that are, are similar to their narcissistic parents, grandparents, elder family members, former spouses, etc. Okay, now I explained this before. A lot of narcissists and custody personalities, they like to goat people into arguments. They like to influence others to become reactionary. So it is very common, for instance, that a romantic partner will describe their narcissistic partner as a cluster B family member, as a, as a, pardon me, as a cluster B personality family member, such as their parents or their grandparents or someone else in their family that was supposed to take care of them when they were growing up. This is often the case. Their current romantic relationship will be very volatile and dysfunctional. More than likely, it will be. All right, let's move forward, move on. This is how some experience being triggered by a painful past via a loved one who may have a custody personality or a narcissistic personality. It can become very challenging to remain focused upon what the real root of the pain actually is rather than the narcissist who is influencing one to become reactionary. So it is very often 
extremely challenging to remain focused on what the root cause of the pain really is because most of the time folks it is not the narcissist the narcissist can be seen as a messenger a lot of times we don't see the narcissist as a messenger because their diabolical tactics are so painful again the key word is diabolical the cluster B personality and the narcissist they have a big trick bag of abracadabras diabolical tactics shenanigans which are very painful so it is very very challenging to stay focused upon what the root cause of a person's pain when they are in a dysfunctional relationship with a narcissist and a cluster B personality who is so-called pushing their buttons or pressing their buttons the narcissist and the cluster B personality can be seen as a messenger in order to see the cluster B personality and the narcissist as a messenger when this happens in other words when the person becomes reactionary they're being triggered for one thing so it is very challenging to see the cluster B personality and the narcissist at that moment as a messenger however they really are now don't worry I'm not defending the narcissist or the cluster B personality I'm only making the point that whenever we become reactionary whenever our buttons are pushed by the narcissist or the cluster B personality it is very difficult to focus on what the root cause of our pain really is and it is not the cluster B personality it is not the narcissist they can be seen as a messenger in other words there is something that needs our attention usually it is that gateway which leads back to our past childhood trauma let's move forward tool number one practice mindfulness tool number two the narcissist can mirror others around him or her therefore when triggered this is an opportunity to get to the root of your pain last and final tool research and consider incorporating shadow work into the support base emotional healing can be done when integration takes place let me go back to the previous slide tool number one practice mindfulness what goes into practicing mindfulness in some of my videos I mentioned this practicing self-preservation goes into mindfulness practicing assertion goes into mindfulness practicing personal boundaries go into mindfulness and finally emotional discipline goes into practicing mindfulness so this is a narcissist repellent this will keep the narcissist at bay because the narcissist cannot tap into the energy field of anyone who practices mindfulness now this does not mean the narcissist will not attempt to tap into the energy field because some of them will continue to do that they will continue to attempt to draw the supply so when you practice mindfulness this is a game changer what does all of that mean when you put that up under the umbrella of mindfulness that means you're now balancing what you think with what you feel instead of allowing the pendulum to swing all the way over to the emotional side or all the way over to your thinking side or the ego okay you're balancing the narcissist and the custody personality they rarely can remain in a relationship with a person who does that why because it's no longer a dysfunctional relationship when a person is practicing mindfulness they will naturally seek out to have healthy relationships because now they're balancing things their life is full of more harmonious relationships and relationships that make sense in other words the relationships benefit him or her not just other people a lot of people who have been groomed by a custody personality and they have been groomed by our narcissist they have been groomed to self-sacrifice which means a lot of their dysfunctional relationships are dysfunctional because it's lopsided it's one-sided either you're the person who gives a lot and don't receive too much or you're the person who overcompensates therefore you have a lot of lopsided or one-sided 
or unequally yoked relationships which are dysfunctional because you've been groomed, perhaps, to self-sacrifice. Let's move on to the next tool. The narcissist can mirror others around him or her. Therefore, when triggered, this is an opportunity to get to the root of your pain. Absolutely, the narcissist can and often does mirror other people around him or her, but this goes both ways. We often, those of us who are in relationships with the narcissist and the cussing personality, we also mirror them. Therefore, when triggered, this is an opportunity to get to the root of the pain. But as I stated before, in the heat of the moment, it is very challenging. It is very difficult to overlook the fact or the possibility that the narcissist is a messenger. The cluster personality is a messenger. This is not to excuse their diabolical tactics for source supply. What I'm simply saying is that in the heat of the moment, this is usually an opportunity to get to the root of your own pain. So when a person is triggered, it is very often that they look at the narcissist and the cluster personality as the enemy rather than looking at him or her as the messenger. Again, this is not to excuse their dysfunctional and their diabolical and their toxic behavior. There is no excuse for that. Okay, so again, the opportunity is usually there when one is triggered, when one is reactionary. The opportunity is there for them to get to the root of their own pain. Third and final tool, research and consider incorporating shadow work into the support base. Emotional healing can be done when integration takes place. So research, I just wanna invite everyone who's watching today, please do your research and consider shadow work. I have started to do shadow work and it is a game changer. One of the things that happens when a person starts to engage or incorporate shadow work into the support base is they take a deeper look inside of themselves. This also helps him or her to divert their attention from the narcissist to themselves. This is another way of looking at the root cause of their pain. They're less likely to become reactionary once they start to dig deeper or dive deeper or go deeper into their own being, which is where the shadow work comes in. Shadow work is when a person embraces the good, the bad, the ugly, and they still accept and love themselves, or they learn to do so. Emotional healing can then take place, all right? References and resources, please look for these in the description box below. I'm Luminous Star, I wanna thank everybody for joining me today or tonight, wherever you may be, and of course, I wish you the very best. Stay tuned for more vlogs, and stay tuned for more videos. Incubator of life through our lines.